My name is Chandra. I was the instructor for the course. Okay. I had 11 years of IT industry experience. Okay. And even we have a three plus years of you know, teaching experience into the online. And we have been almost you know, five years nearly into the training field as well. Okay. It's a kind of you know, part time we are doing all these trainings. Fine then. So coming to this AWS, before we start in AWS, so I just want to hear you from guys. So anybody from like, you know, just allow me for two minutes, at least you know, two to five minutes maximum so that I can cover all the basic requirements so that everybody will be on the same page. Then we'll start. Okay. So as a pressure like Ram, guys, to make you understand for the first five minutes, I'm going to spend here. Right. So you can see in the technology wise, you have a number of technologies. So what is the ultimate objective for each and every resource? To provide that particular client 100% success rate. Right. We have to make sure that particular business to be up and running as always without having any downtime. Right. So we can say that particular server should bring an up, up and I mean up and running as always. That's what our main objective. So in our olden days, like in 1980s or uh, before that also, we don't have any latest technologies. We have only a physical server concept, right? So in this physical server, you will be able to run only on one application. You will not be able to run any multiple applications on any server. So you have in a physical server, that physical server, you have to run only one application. Are you able to understand me this point, particular point? If you want, I can give an example. In your mobile itself, you are running in multiple applications right now. Right? But in the olden days, we don't have this kind of facility. You have to run one application using one physical server. That physical server, let's assume it, it may cost you, you know, 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs or 50 lakhs, whatever the cost it is. So this much of money you spend, but still you are limited to run only one application on your mission. Apart from this server, again, you need in a database, storage, networking, to keep your server up and running, right? So still we require other computing services as well. So where we are going to keep this, all your computing services, that is called your data center. Everybody knows what is data center. So shall I take it as a S? Yes? If anybody is not aware of it, yes. just let me know so that I can uh, uh, try to elaborate it more. Okay. So not only data uh, RAM, we can keep all our equipments in one location that is called our data center, right? Where you're going to store your servers, right? That is called your data center. It's not only server, again, it will have you know, all the equipments, like in you know, hardware related equipments, it will be located in one location that is called a data center. So now, okay, you have a server, you have a data center and everything is working fine right now. If you can provide a guarantee to the client, your server, it won't go offline by any chance. Can you able to provide that kind of guarantee to the client now? Anybody? I can see somebody has a 10 years of experience. So can you please try to interact here so that the session will be good? Can you what is the question again? So I'm just mentioned, I have my data center. I have one physical server. Everything is up and running right now. So if my client is asking us, so can you able to provide an 100% guarantee my application won't go by any chance. So as an engineer, no, we as, an, as, a, as we a can, service, we can't give it. Right? No, we can't. Right. So we will not be able to provide a guarantee to the client. We will not be able to give a hundred percent guarantee to running one mission. So to provide a better solution, what is the best way we have? Is there any alternative way with us? Uh, cluster mechanism to give the, to avoid the single point of failure. Right. So we have to provide an better solution. So we have to think about alternative way. For that, again, we have to build, we have to give one more physical server because we don't have any virtualization in initial days, right? We have to keep one more physical server. In this case, let's assume your first physical server, it will cost you 50 lakhs. Again, you have to invest in a 50 lakhs to buy a one more server. Then you have to keep it each and everything should be a similar like your server one to server two. Okay. Then, Again, you have to keep it everything as a redundancy, like power, networking and each and everything. 
Now let's assume it, you have two servers, you have one data center, it's providing a solution to the client. Now can you be able to give a guarantee to the people? 100%? Yes, we can't give a guarantee to the client, but if you compare with an last solution, still we can give some percentage of portion, we can give a high, right? But still there are chances it may go offline. To avoid these kind of situations, we have to keep it our secondary data center. That is called our disaster recovery data center. Right? Yes. So coming to this point, if you have any two servers or four servers to, to serve one single application in your data center one, when you are talking about disaster recovery, you have to keep it as a mirror of your data center. It means whatever you configured on your first data center or primary data center, right? You have to do everything in your disaster data center. Got it? You have to keep it each and everything as a mirror copy on your secondary data center. So what will happen here? Your cost is going to be double. Right? How much money you spend for your primary data center build? Each and everything you are going to repeat in your data center too. Got it? Is it clear guys? So that your yes. cost, it will get double. Right? When you compare this option, whatever you created your disaster recovery data center, you are not sure when you are going to use it. Until unless your primary data center went offline, then only you need your disaster recovery data center. Otherwise you don't require it. Got it? But you cannot say it doesn't require. Because we have seen an example in last two years back. I can say in last nearly now two and a half year right now. So I hope everybody remember uh, Chennai uh, issue. Like in Chennai we had enough floods, right? Everybody remember that. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just yes, yes, if, you, yes. if you want to make it clear about it, I can give an example. For example, you are running a, I mean, Let's, okay, I, I hope everybody knows about Ola, Ola Caps, right? Let's think about if Ola running their data center based on Chennai location. Let's assume it, Ola data center is located in Chennai. They are running their, they are running their caps in entire India, right? If something happens to that particular location, like a, something happens to your data center, will you able to book your cab from Bangalore? Got it? No. From Delhi? It's impossible. Gurgaon? Pune? There is no issues in this areas. Only in Chennai location there was an issue. Understand? Everybody? As of being yes. a fresher. So freshers, do you have any questions guys here? No. So anybody is having any question? Just let me know. You can easily understand this. Even you have installed in your mobile. Okay. In your mobile is working fine. Your internet also is working fine. But where they have hosted this application, that particular server should be up and running. Then only you will be able to access this app. Whatever you have installed in your mobile. Here. Okay. So due to this Chennai location issue, like in a data center issue, we will not be able to book any cab from across the globe, across the India. You can say. Got it? To overcome these kind of scenarios only we required our secondary data center. Okay? Now, after some time, I mean after many years, so technology has been blown up into the virtualization. So everybody knows about virtualization? How it works? Anybody is not aware of it, just let me know so that I can elaborate that. If everybody knows about it, I can skip it. Okay, I can give in a simple words. Now, if you are talking about a virtualization, how it works, physically, like we have only physical server earlier. Once the technology has been like, once the virtualization has been introduced, so what you can do, you can virtually split your physical machine into n number of virtual machines, right? Whatever the resources you have in your physical server, that you can split into your n number of servers. The best example, your laptops, right? If you want to install Linux virtual machines in your laptop, yes, you can do that. But to require, it's required in a CPU, 
storage and everything from where you are going to assign it from your laptop only so it is in a, your physical server is your laptop so from there you are going to create in a virtual machines so you are going to save the resources which you have in your physical server in your virtual machines is it clear guys yeah is it clear yeah. thank you now what are the challenges we have in a physical and virtualization technologies even we have in a physical infrastructure we have some problems then we have been identified virtualization still we are talking about other solutions like cloud so why we have to think about it what are the challenges we have in a physical it infrastructure so this many challenges we have i'm just giving an example here right even if it is an virtualization also your virtualization has been enabled but still that that particular physical server it, it may have some count okay for example what are the physical server you have you can create virtually 200 servers or 100 servers whatever it might be just take an example for 100 so more than 100 virtual machines you will not be able to make it using one physical server is that right so in this case whenever you reach 100 servers so what do you have to do that's an example you have already running in 100 virtual machines in one of the physical mission you got a requirement from your application team to do some testing they need one virtual mission so how we can proceed it obviously you have to reach your client to arrange one more physical server based on that again you are going to create a one more one more virtual mission right so your customer has to spend the money again for the physical server and the location uh, if it is enabled in a disaster recovery then they have to look for another servers as well like this your cost is going to be up like we have many issues like in you know, a space power regular maintenance each and everything you have to buy and you have to build it yourself right you can go in a bit elaborated way power per cabinet disaster recovery everything we need enough money right to overcome these kind of situations i mean people is thinking about the solution for that then cloud has been entered the market so somebody has just mentioned here they are already working into the uh, devops roles okay and every rest of everybody is learning it so can anyone tell me like what is cloud a simple and uh, short answer anyone who's that a group of servers only servers okay let me tell you so now we have an, uh, multiple options here in the cloud okay so i hope everybody knows about earlier gmail right before google cloud everybody knows about gmail but why it's not an, it's not called google cloud it's only gmail okay so there are limitations to provide the services they are providing a limited services earlier that's why it's only gmail that's why it's only google now they have entered into the google cloud okay we'll try to explain more about it but coming to the cloud any cloud service provider if you want to become a cloud service provider you have to provide a minimum six to seven services then only you will become a cloud service provider so on top of it here the first thing pay as you go model so you should not ask any vendors to pay the money initially right let them allow your clients to use the services then collect the money at the end and the end of the month and pay as you go model so there is no capital investment let them use the services they can pay the money what are the services they have used and how many number of hours they have been used and unlimited storage on demand and self service at least in a monitoring tool at least in a monitoring service and notification as a service email as a service and the most important is scaling right when you are running your own data centers like in a physical data center when you need an additional services again you have to buy right for example whenever your service is i mean your web server is getting more overloaded when you when you need an additional cpu or memory right you have to assign that it manually when it's getting a less workload again you have to reduce and you have to remove that from that particular server okay you have to do that in manually is that right any linux admin also can answer it got it so for example so any of the e-commerce website like in a flipkart or amazon let's assume it they are getting more workload only on the weekends 
So obviously you need uh, more resources on it, right? And uh, similarly, let's assume it from Monday to Friday, they don't have less workload. So they have to reduce the resources which you have been assigned. So this it can be doing a manually. So instead of that in auto scaling, you can set up the requirements. So it will take care of each and everything. So even server launch, server termination, you don't require any teams. So earlier you might aware of it. We have in a server build teams like RFC teams. Did everybody remember? I mean, knows about it? 